Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the new Blue Eddy EB3A power station, its smallest model yet. Now I don't normally review smaller units, but I think this is a very important release for Blue Eddy that corrects every issue I've had with their products in the past and shows a compelling view of their future. So what's so special about the EB3A? Well, if you watch my earlier Blue Eddy reviews, I've dinged them for having large, loud wall bricks for AC charging, displays that were either not informative enough or too complex and hard to read outdoors, no app control, and an overall design that really wasn't very cohesive. With this unit, they matched EcoFlow's best features like ultra fast wall charging without a power brick, an all new display with just the right mix of information, modern industrial design, and sleek smartphone app, and combined it with the winning features Blue Eddy already had, like wireless charging, LFP battery chemistry, and competitive prices. The overall design is pretty close to the larger EB55 and EB70S models, but these feel like a good first step in the right direction, while the EB3A feels like the final destination. This small 10.1 pound package nails pretty much every feature that a modern power station should have and is best in class in a few areas and includes a two year warranty. In the box, you get the unit, power cable, instruction manual, and warranty card. That's it. The solar and car charging cables are accessories you need to purchase separately, which is a bit disappointing, but probably helps them hit this aggressive price point. All the input and output ports are located on the front panel. There's a 12 volt cigarette port and two 5521 fully regulated DC outputs, one 100 watt USB-C port, and two USB-A ports. On the AC side, there are two 120 volt plugs with a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter. For charging, there's an eight millimeter input for solar and car charging and a standard three prong AC input for wall charging. Everything's neatly organized and the ports have rubber covers to keep dirt and moisture out. There are physical buttons to turn on the AC and DC ports and light with a one second press. And I much prefer this to the touchscreen on my AC200P. There's an integrated flashlight with low, high, and SOS settings that are controlled by its own power button. So if you're into that kind of thing, it's here. On the top, there's a folding handle and a 15 watt wireless charging pad that worked great with my iPhone and AirPods. This is turned on along with the DC and USB ports, the sides of grills with the two fans that cool the electronics. And these are actually fairly quiet. On the bottom, there are rubber feet and a sticker with key specifications. The overall build quality of the case is totally fine, if a bit lightweight and plasticky. The all new display addresses all my issues with the Blue Eddy models of the past. The EB50 and 150 I reviewed had super basic displays that only showed the state of charge in five bars and were a bit dim. The AC200P went the other extreme with a detailed but power hungry color LCD touchscreen that although cool, was hard to see outdoors or off axis. The new screen uses a crisp high contrast display that's easy to read from any angle, inside and out. It has a clear modern layout that shows the state of charge in percent in the center with the time remaining underneath and the input and output watts on the sides. I'm really glad they went with this new design because I think it hits the sweet spot of simplicity and clarity and I hope they use this in all future products. My only complaint is the screen turns off after only 30 seconds, which I feel is way too fast for such an efficient screen. I'm hoping they can adjust this in a future firmware update and offer a setting in the app to configure the timeout. Now you can turn the screen back on by tapping any of the three power buttons, so it's just a minor inconvenience. The EB3A is complemented with a smartphone app for iOS and Android that previously was reserved for their largest units. It is an elegant design that shows the state of charge, solar and wall charging input, AC and DC output power, all in a clean and friendly display. You can turn the AC and DC ports on and off and power down the unit remotely, which is a really nice feature. The flashlight on the front can also be controlled in the app, but oddly, it's tucked away in preferences. There are also settings for charging speed, power lifting and eco mode, which I'll cover a bit later. Having an app also opens the door for future firmware updates, which is a big plus. 
I love that they offer an app, especially for such a small unit, but its range is limited to Bluetooth's 30 or 40 feet, so I found I couldn't connect to it if I was on a different floor in my house. I prefer EcoFlow's app that works with Wi-Fi and can be accessed anywhere in the world. This is the first Blue Eddy power station to ship with an internal charger. And that's really the major feature here. It's so nice to just plug this into the wall with a standard power cable and have it charge quickly and quietly. Their bulky and slow battery chargers have been my biggest complaint with all the Blue Eddy products to date, especially because the internal fans are quite loud and never turn off, even when the battery is fully charged. The standard charging mode puts out a whopping 260 watts and charge my unit from 0 to 70% in 45 minutes and to 100% in just 1 hour and 6 minutes, which is the fastest charge I've ever seen. But wait, there's more! In the app, you can choose from one of three charging speeds. There's a turbo mode to charge at 340 watts, which charges in a blistering 48 minutes. Note that this will generate more heat and reduce the lifespan of your battery, so you should only use it if you're in a big rush. There's a third option to quiet charge the battery at 100 watts, which is my preferred setting because it's best for battery health and, well, it's dead quiet because the fans don't kick on. Speaking of noise, this is a super quiet unit, even up close. At one meter away, I measured 42 decibels, which is only eight decibels louder than the ambient background noise of my room. Even in turbo mode, it was only about five decibels louder at 47 dB. When standard charging, the fans only kick on periodically and only occasionally spin up to the max volume I measured. I did find there was a strange buzzing, whirring sound for a few seconds as the fan slowly ramped up. When charging, you can use the AC and DC outputs at the same time because it supports pass-through charging. Inside, it packs a 268.8 watt-hour lithium iron phosphate or LFP battery. I think this is a key feature for any power station in 2022, and I'm happy to see Blue Eddy rolling it out across all of their products. It's safer because it's less likely to cause fires when dropped or damaged, but best of all, it can handle two to four times more charge and discharge cycles compared to a standard NCM battery chemistry. This is rated at 2,500 cycles to 80% capacity versus 500 to 800 cycles for a typical NCM battery. Now, LFP batteries have a lower energy density, so they are larger and heavier than comparable NCM batteries. In fact, this is pretty close in size to the River Pro that has a 720 watt hour NCM battery that's three times larger, but similar in inverter size and solar input. These Anchor NCM battery banks are 100 watt hours each, so the battery inside the EB3A is roughly equivalent to two and a half of these packs. You can see how much of the enclosure must be dedicated to the electronics, fans, and larger LFP battery. I think the size trade-off are worth it, but keep in mind this isn't the smallest unit out there at this capacity. For such a small unit, this has an incredibly powerful 600 watt pure sine wave inverter. This is double the AC power of the EcoFlow River Mini and triple the power of the Goal Zero Yeti 200X. Now again, keep in mind the battery is only 269 watt hours, so if you run a 600 watt AC load, it will only run for about 20 minutes. I tested the AC output by running a space heater and heat gun, and it could solidly power appliances in the 550 to 600 watt range continuously, but like all Blue Eddy inverters I've tested, it doesn't have much headroom and would trip after only a fraction of a second if I tried to run a 750 watt space heater. So the 1200 watt peak power must be only for tiny spikes in milliseconds. This can power a TV, projector, stereo, laptop, or even small fridge, but not an AC, microwave, or coffee maker. Speaking of peak power, they added a new feature called Power Lift that allows this to run larger resistive loads like space heaters that exceed the inverter rating by lowering the output voltage to stay within the 600 watt limit. You can turn this on or off through the smartphone app. I found this worked as advertised and was able to power a 750 watt space heater that would normally trigger an overload, 
But keep in mind this can't be used with sensitive electronics, compressor fridges, air conditioners, or microwaves, so its usefulness is pretty limited. This is pretty much identical to EcoFlow's XBoost feature, and although I recommend leaving both off to avoid issues, it's nice to have in a pinch. I was concerned that having such a powerful inverter might impact efficiency, because the larger the inverter is, the more power is wasted as heat. So bigger isn't always better. And when the AC was on, I would noticed that the top of the unit got noticeably warm, even if nothing was plugged in. Over the course of 12 hours, the battery drained from 100 to 50% with the inverter on, but no loads connected. That's about 13.5 watts, which is actually quite good idle consumption, but with such a small battery, it adds up fast. Fortunately, Eco Mode automatically turns the ports off if there's less than 10 watts AC or 1 watt DC after 4 hours by default to prevent this self discharge. This feature can be adjusted in the app between 1 and 4 hours or turned off completely. I like that the unit is so efficient that it doesn't really have an overall power button to shut off like the AC200P, you just turn the ports on and off. There is also a UPS feature that allows you to connect an appliance and leave the unit plugged in. While the grid is up, the power will flow from the wall through the EB3A and into the appliance. When the grid goes down, it quickly switches to battery power. They don't specify how fast this switch happens, but I can see a small blink in this lamp when I unplug power going into the unit, so it's certainly not instant like a true UPS. To test the AC output efficiency, I charging it to 100%, I then discharge the battery at a 0.2 discharge rate, which drains from 100 to 0% over 5 hours. Getting 80% of the rated output is pretty typical in this test for larger units, and with the EB3A I was able to pull 206 watt hours for a 77% rate. This is actually 2% better than the EcoFlow River Max I tested earlier, but it's still a bit below average compared to larger units. I ran the same test on the DC port and was able to pull 180 watt hours or 70% of the rated battery capacity, so it's actually a little bit less efficient than AC. The DC ports are rated at 10 amps or 120 watts of output, and they delivered that and even a bit more in my testing. The DC output is fully regulated, which means that the voltage will remain a steady 13.25 volts no matter what the state of charge is on the battery. So that's great for running a portable compressor fridge or other voltage sensitive appliances, but that's the culprit that uses more electricity along the way. The unit also has two 5521 barrel connectors rated at 10 amps of output, compared to 3 amps on most units I've tested. I'd suggest buying a pair of these 5521 to cigarette adapters and you can run up to 3 appliances at once or use them for more USB ports with an adapter. I tested the DC standby losses by turning the ports on but connecting nothing and found it only used 5 watts per hour which is very impressive. Now going forward I'll be testing a simple van life DC setup that runs my Iceco 40 liter compressor fridge, 10 watt USB string lights and USB fan continuously to see how long a power station will run under real world conditions. I have the fridge set at 0 degrees Fahrenheit and max mode to better simulate a 50 to 60 degree difference in ambient temperature in a car in the summer and a typical 40 degree fridge temp. This little unit was able to power that setup for six and a half hours. So it's too small to use for full time use, but it performed really well for its size. There is a 100 watt USB C port and two 10 amp USB A ports that all worked flawlessly in my tests and you can use all three simultaneously. For such a small unit, I'm impressed this has a powerful 100 watt USB-C port and it's perfect for charging a MacBook Pro or other high draw appliances. I was able to charge my 15 inch MacBook Pro, iPad Pro 12.9 inch and Sonos Roam at the same time and the USB worked great. One minor disappointment is the USB-C port can't be used to charge the unit, it's only for output but the AC charging is so good, I don't think anyone will miss this feature. There is an 8mm DC input port that's used for car and solar charging. For car charging, I tested this with an 8mm to cigarette adapter I had lying around, and it worked great, providing up to 100 watts of power, which is about all you can safely draw from this kind of connector, 
so I'm glad it's limited to 8 amps to avoid overheating the plug. This means you can recharge the unit in less than 3 hours. For solar charging, this little unit has a high quality MPPT solar charge controller that can accept an impressive 200 watts of power between 12 and 28 volts and 8.5 and amps, which means that with the right panels, you could charge this in an hour and a half. Now I think an 80 to 120 watt panel is probably a better choice. I tested solar charging with my favorite folding solar panel, the XStar SP100. This has a built-in 8mm output cable, so it plugged right in, and in less than ideal conditions, I was able to get up to 95 watts out of this 100 watt panel, so it can easily recharge the battery in about 3 hours. The XStar is a beast that always over delivers, but it shows that the solar charge controller in the EB3A works great. If you're interested in learning more about the XStar, check out my review. All right, let's wrap this up. Overall, I am very impressed with this unit. It's compact, well-designed, and packs a punch well above its size class. It checks every box for a modern power station in 2022. App control, LFP battery chemistry, ultra-fast wall charging without a power brick, crisp display, wireless charging pad, 100 watt USB-C output, regulated DC ports, and AC output and solar charging that are much more powerful than what I'd expect in a unit this small. My criticisms are pretty minor. I wish the display would stay on longer than 30 seconds, the app's range is limited by Bluetooth and doesn't reconnect quickly, and the overall size of this unit is fairly large given its capacity. I hope this represents a new product design direction for all of Blue Eddy's small to mid-sized power stations because it's just so much better than the mix of design styles and features that make up their portfolio today. Clearly the same display and inverter and electronics would be a perfect fit for larger units in the 500 to 1500 watt size. If you're looking for a portable, affordable power station that can power your portable fridge, laptop, mobile devices, and occasionally supply mid-sized AC appliances in a pinch, you really can't go wrong with the EB3A. Let me know what you think of this unit in the comments, and be sure to subscribe because I'm planning on reviewing the EcoFlow River Mini Wireless soon to compare these head-to-head. -head. All right, well, thanks for watching, everyone. Till next time.